Chris and I work on our nation's forest inventory program. And today, the two of us would like to share some insights from our recent journey building a comprehensive and geospatially enabled engagement portfolio. You see, we're in the information business, and our focus is on the extent, condition, and trends of forest land across the entire country. We invest $75 million a year to collect data across three themes, field inventories of forest land, a census of the forest products industry, and a survey of forest land owners. This massive campaign collects data on over 355,000 plots on public and private lands across nine time zones, from Guam all the way to the Caribbean territories. The result is a database with more than 19 million trees, and we've been doing this for over 80 years. We're all faced with the same challenge, growing mindshare while maintaining our traditional customers and partnerships. Our spectrum of users is expanding. On the one end, we have our long-standing relationship with power users. On the other end, we have the general public. Their respective needs are very different, but they are both grounded in our data. In the past 20 years, we have invested over a billion dollars, and it's our obligation to leverage this investment to its greatest potential. To meet our obligation, we're developing a new and visually engaging portfolio of tools and applications. Part of the agency's mission includes educating the public to help them participate effectively in our planning process for public lands. So we're introducing the Forest Atlas to facilitate their exploration of important topics like where trees grow and why, what else lives in the forest besides trees, the forces that shape the forest, the benefits forests provide us, and what will influence the future. This application uses an interactive dendrogram to visualize where forest communities exist. You can ask questions and interactively explore the spatial distribution of broad categories like hardwoods and softwoods, as well as the major forest types within them. These communities are mapped by linking our field data to spectral responses observed by satellites. We can delve even deeper and examine individual tree species ranges. Users begin with an interactive view of the relationship between the number of trees and the volume of wood they produce. Around the outside, species are placed in the context of different ecological landscapes where trees grow. Loblolly pine exists within a single ecological division, is relatively numerous, and has a large volume of wood across the landscape. But we can also discover species using the legend. For instance, quaking aspen is found in two ecological divisions, has a smaller number of trees, and much less wood volume. What excites us is the ability to have the charts interrogate the maps. Aspen is distributed widely across the west and north. Let's take a closer look at one of our agency's biggest challenges, wildland fire. Using nationwide data and information collected in collaboration with key federal, state, and academic partners, our users can explore the dynamics of fire across the landscape. We've all heard how devastating fire is in the western U.S., but the map makes it clear that the southeast has its own struggles with fire. As before, the charts communicate with the maps. Selecting the early years in the record subsets the data to the same interval. Users may notice fire becoming more common and want to explore the distribution in more recent years. Or perhaps they're only interested in the really big recent fires. This is the exact same content we're publishing in our print document but you can see how the digital application brings it all to life. Looking through the lens of an engagement portfolio, we realized we can leverage the digital content supporting the Forest Atlas for other uses, like analysis and app development. Registering Forest Atlas content makes it discoverable in ArcGIS Online by resource professionals who want to use our data. This gallery app contains the same species of interest from the Forest Atlas. We're also structuring our approval and publishing processes to ensure the content is widely available. So, as we register data in ArcGIS Online, we also publish it to sites like geoplatform.gov to support users in the open community. All these products are designed to span the engagement portfolio, providing rich interactive experiences for the public while simultaneously making our content available to other professionals. For our technical users who want detailed summaries, we have a validator and related tabling and download tools. It generates population estimates, it calculates uncertainty, and it's customizable by creating and submitting elegant SQL queries to our inventory database. 
This is exactly what our power users want, and we're releasing an API to facilitate its continued development and application. Our program is built on strong relationships with our user community. Many of the state forestry agencies across the country are not only our users, but are vital partners in constructing our engagement portfolio. And we view this as important to our success. Our state partners need quick access to timely information for developing their own focused applications. This is an application by the Texas A&M Forest Service using our data that puts timber supply analyses in the hands of decision makers and executives. Very quickly, we can perform an analysis of a, of a 50 mile radius in an area near the Angelina National Forest. This might represent a planned mill location. The app generates a detailed report on the forest resources within the search radius. It provides a rich set of metrics in a summary report that can aid resource managers and decision makers alike. The report and map are data rich, spatially explicit, and customized for the user. Texas A&M Forest Service is a great example of our partners using the raw FI data in interesting ways to support localized needs. In many cases, under the, understanding the resource is only a small part of the equation. We also need to know where wood processing facilities exist. We can provide our users with a temporally rich and engaging experience that puts the data they want and need in their hands. Between 2007 and 2011, nearly 500 mills closed during the most recent economic downturn. This mill decline has had a significant impact on employment, the economy, and the production of wood products in the South. We can even visit the same area we used in our timber supply report, where over 50 mills closed during the same period, to see the competing facilities that survived. Now, almost everyone wants to know how products move around, and wood is no different. When we put wood supply and wood processing together, we can summarize and illustrate interstate wood movement in the US. We start off with a very noisy view of wood movement across the country, but users may only be interested in one state at a time. With, we can use this interactive map to provide quick and focused answers where wood is, movement is taking place, and we can quantify that movement with our data. Now, providing relevant information is important across our entire spectrum of users. Embedded maps deliver timely, interactive content to strengthen the media's ability to share our stories. Although this article about invasive plants is focused on Utah, readers can interrogate the map for information in their area of interest. This is the first time we've been able to publish a national map of inventoried invasive plants that speaks to a problem that costs our country billions of dollars every year. And we are also engaging educators in developing high quality conservation education materials so that students can understand and appreciate our country's natural resources and the importance of managing them wisely. This sample lesson plan explores the relationship between forests, land ownership, and why they are important. Of course, there is a corresponding web map that helps them explore the content in geographic context. In all of this, it is important to remember that we are our own customers. This new dashboard quickly gives our managers a current view of the entire inventory. We are now looking at the 2016 inventory after about six weeks of data collection. We can monitor our plots as they are collected, and we can, pro we can watch their progress as, as they move through our system to our public database. As you can see, we have an extensive and data-rich program with application to a wide variety of users. Nothing demonstrates this more succinctly than forest carbon accounting. Our program is responsible for producing and reporting the official forest carbon estimates for submission to international bodies. This map highlights the largest pools of forest carbon across the landscape. In green areas, it's live trees. In gray areas, it's soils. And in red areas, it's dead material. Everyone is engaged with this issue in some capacity, be they a landowner considering a management action to increase carbon stocks, a public trying to understand climate change, a scientist studying carbon cycle dynamics, or a policymaker preparing for the Conference of Parties in Paris last December. We appreciate you taking the time to be with us today, 
And we hope you'll find value in identifying your own spectrum of users and developing a flexible engagement portfolio to address their needs.